I crack myself up. Okay, we gotta go. Whoosh. So now we'll have the uh, the Dharma talk for adults, um, and um, this time I just plan to use one voice, so it should be a little bit easier. Let's begin, as we always do, with the words of Shinran Shonin, the founder of Jodo Shinshu Buddhism. Single-heartedly practicing the saying of the name of Amida, whether walking, standing, sitting, or reclining, without regard to the length of time and without abandoning it from moment to moment. This is called the act of true settlement, for it is in accord with the Buddha's vow. Shinran Shonin quoting Shantao's on medit- non-meditative practice, which you can find in the notes on One's Calling and Many Calling in the Collected Works of Shinran, Volume 1, page 483. Namo Amidabha, Namo Amidabha. When you go to sleep at night, do you think to yourself, hmm, I wonder if the sun will rise tomorrow? Probably not. Most of us would take it for granted that the sun will rise tomorrow morning. Of course, some, uh, some sunrises are more spectacular than others. Take a look at this. So there's very little I can add to that except to say, wow. (laughs) Um, We know that every sunrise is not going to be like that one, not necessarily. But if we, we, we just take it for granted that the sun will rise in the morning. So let's use this as an opportunity to think about what else in this life do we take for granted? Many of us take it for granted there will be air to breathe, food to eat, water to drink, clothes to wear, and a roof over our heads. And of course, we will have a loving ohana, we'll have great friends and happy pet companions in our lives. And it goes without saying, we will be happy, safe, and well. But what if the sun didn't rise tomorrow? What if there was no air to breathe, there was no food to eat, there was no water to drink, no clothes to wear, and no roof over our heads? What if, what if, what if? If you think about this sort of thing too much, obviously you can make yourself very anxious and you can literally drive yourself crazy because you have no control over these things. There are no guarantees of anything in this life. And we, we know this to be true uh, as Buddhists. Um, and yet in the back of our mind, we do think about these things. In fact, we worry about these things. We subconsciously or unconsciously worry about, what if we lost everything? What if we lost our freedom, love, wealth, health, and this life? The only way for the human mind to cope with this degree of existential uncertainty is to assume, to assume the sun will rise tomorrow. That is to say, I assume I will wake up not dead, I'm just assuming that I'm, I'm going to wake up tomorrow and I won't be dead. But what are we you know, basing these assumptions on? How do you know what is essentially unknowable? The sun will rise tomorrow. How do we know this without any doubts? Past history, the sun always rises in the morning. Now, any good gambler will tell you the past is not necessarily a prediction of the future, particularly when you're betting on, on black, you know. Uh, How do we explain the sun rising in the morning? We're all educated people. We've been trained as critical thinkers, and we're not inclined to believe in fairy tales. Uh, And so most of us will vaguely answer something like, 
while the Earth spins on its axis while simultaneously rotating the sun, creating the perception that the sun rises in the morning and sets in the evening, when in fact the sun stays still and we're moving around it. So we demand authoritative sources, people, textbooks, scientific fact. But what if the sun didn't rise tomorrow? Would we ask, why? Or demand, prove the sun didn't rise? Or insist, that's unconstitutional. I have a right to sunshine, maybe. Uh, would we offer prayers and thoughts for the sun to rise? Would we sacrifice animals to the gods? Would I go outside and grab a chicken and you know, sacrifice it to the gods? Uh, would we blame the other? Oh, it's those uh, illegal aliens. It's those people from Mars. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's something, but it's, it's not me. Actually, if the sun didn't rise tomorrow, uh, we would all be dead in pretty much short order since life as we know it would not be possible. So what if the sun didn't rise? What if our most foundational assumptions about life, and we'll always have clean air, water, food to eat, clothing, shelter, suddenly these assumptions did not hold true? What would happen if the sun didn't rise? What would happen if everyone right, you cherish in your life, your spouse, your partner, your, your, your children, your grandchildren, your friends, your neighbors, your pets, your community, what if this was all suddenly just taken away from you? What if the sun didn't rise tomorrow? COVID-19 obviously has brought great changes to our lives and lifestyles. Everything that we took for granted, everything that we took for granted has been taken away. The freedom to do what I want to do when I want to do it, how I want to do it, with whom I want to do it, and for whatever reason I want to do it. We take these things for granted and it's been taken away. So Shakyamuni Buddha, more than 2,500 years ago, taught that the cause of suffering in human life is a clinging and stubborn attachment to this false idea of self. Right? When we live life as, it's about me, the world revolves around Carrie, I come first, then ultimately we suffer, our loved ones suffer, our friends suffer, our community suffers, the entire world suffers. So after 10 months of public health emergencies, uh, people are understandably tired. It's difficult. It's been a challenge. So millions of people traveled you know, during the recent Thanksgiving holiday, despite knowing the risks of spreading the virus or becoming infected themselves. So safe at home in front of my computer, which is connected to high speed to the internet, and writing this Dharma talk, because I still have a job as a Buddhist priest and a temple minister, it's all too easy for me to sit in judgment of others. Oh, those crazy, selfish people. It's all too easy, all too human to blame the inconvenience caused by COVID-19 on other people. Oh, those crazy, selfish people. But it is intuitively obvious that I have no control over what other people think, say, or do. Oh, those crazy, selfish people. It's equally obvious that I have no control over um, whether the sun will come out tomorrow. I just believe the sun will come out. I just have no doubt the sun will come out. I just have faith the sun will come out. But there are limits to self-power. Think of it this way. Think of it this way. Does the sun rise because I believe it's going to rise? Does the sun rise because I have conviction? I'm without doubt the sun will rise. Does the sun rise because I have faith? No, the sun rises because the sun rises. The sun rises, a new day begins, life begins anew. And at the end of the day, the sun will set, a new night will begin, and life begins anew. Because the sun rises regardless of what I believe, think, say, or do. So, should I just take the sunrise for granted? Absolutely not. Do not take the sunrise for granted. I think that spectacular sunrises and sunsets that we've been enjoying lately are a manifestation 
of Amida's compassion and wisdom working in our lives right here, right now. Sometimes it takes a spectacular sunset for us to notice um, that the wonder and beauty of life is all around us. We just have to open our eyes. If you are forced to pause and take notice of the beauty of a sunrise, sunset, a rainbow, the ocean, the mountains, the blue sky, uh, the white clouds, and it takes your breath away, do you say, mahalo? Or do you snap a photo with your, for, uh, for your Instagram or Facebook? Well, that would be me. Um, and particularly in my case, because I'm so self-centered, Amita has to do something really, really spectacular to shake me out of complacency, out of my assumptions, out of my taking things for granted. The sunrise, the sunset, the ocean, the mountains, the sky, the clouds. Amita is saying to me, Gary, dude, look up from your phone and look at the sunset. Look at the sunrise. Look at the blue ocean. Look at the green mountains. The flowers are blooming. The birds are singing. Fruits are ripening on the, on the trees. And rain is falling from the sky, creating a beautiful rainbow. OK, dude. So Amida is a very, very clever person, very clever Buddha. Uh, OK, dude, if that's not enough, how about a Zoom meeting with your grandchildren? Huh, so cute. And growing up so fast. Growing up so fast. So take a moment to pause and reflect upon the things that you take for granted in this life, this unrepeatable life, this moment of this unrepeatable life. You cannot control whether the sun rises, what other people do, and some of the things that happen in your life. But you can take a moment to truly appreciate, to wonder why these things have come to you. Why the sun rises every morning? Why does the sun rise every morning? You can choose to pause and reflect. And this is the practice of Shin Buddhism, of Jodo Shinshu. So try this. When you see the sunrise, just say, Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu, because the sun rose this morning. When you see the sunset, say, Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu, because the sun set this evening. When you see white clouds, blue skies, green mountains, azure oceans, say Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu, because wow, wow, wow. And when, when, when your wife, when your spouse rolls her eyes because you've told that fishing story a million times, say Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu, because, well, I, I have told that story too many times, and my friends are just too nice to tell me to, Gary, you've told that for like you know, a million times already, stop. When the baby is crying and won't stop crying no matter what you do, say Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu, because one day that baby may be changing your diapers. That beautiful grandchild may be changing my diapers. When you see someone who's not wearing a mask, you can get outraged, and then you can say Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu because the bondage of selfishness is manifesting before your eyes. Not the other person's selfishness, your selfishness. Do you feel angry at that person? Do you feel rage? Do you give in to that rage? Or do you feel compassion? Do you feel compassion? And try to understand. Do you get angry over getting angry over the other person's selfishness? How self-centered is that? So every moment of every day of this unrepeatable life is an opportunity to feel wonder at the beauty of a sunrise, to appreciate just how remarkable it is that this day has come to you, to marvel at this unrepeatable life that has been given to you to feel deep gratitude because you didn't deserve this wonder and beauty. What did you do to deserve this sunset? You didn't ask for it. Amida, please give us a beautiful sunset. And we don't do that. Um, sometimes you don't appreciate it. And sometimes, yes, you just take it for granted. So just say mahalo. 
The next time you see a spectacular sunset, pause, take a moment to remember your departed loved ones, your dear friends, your beloved pets, who made you smile and feel loved most of all. Just say mahalo, just say mahalo. When you go shopping for food and water, when you visit the doctor's office or the dentist's office, when you turn on your tap and water comes out, truly feel gratitude for the countless people, causes and conditions and situations that allow you to live right here, right now, in this moment. Just say mahalo. Oops, sorry, went too far. When you live aloha, mahalo naturally comes out of your heart and out of your mouth in appreciation for this great wahana of life, the blessings of the aina. Do you deliberately and consciously cause yourself to live aloha? We say that using the command form of the verb, right? Live aloha, telling other people. So, okay, uh, from today, from right now, I'm going to live aloha. And any local person will tell you, Mag, Gary, it doesn't work that way. Where are you from? You're from Los Angeles. Oh, you are from Los Angeles. <laughs> katong, 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 katong. Okay, okay, okay. Um, no, no, you can't cause yourself to live aloha. Aloha comes to you. It enters your heart. It changes your heart. Aloha enters your mind. It changes your attitude. The same way. Right? Do you deliberately and consciously cause yourself to receive shinjin from Amida Buddha? You say, Buddha, Amida, give me some Xinjing, give me some of that. No, no. The faith of Xinjing, the interesting heart, it comes to you. It comes to you. So does your saying, Namo Amidabutsu, cause your birth in the pure land? No, it is Xinjing. It is the faith of Xinjing that comes to us from Amida. It is a gift. So why should I believe in Amida, Namo Amidabutsu, or Xinjing, the faith of Xinjing? Well, you shouldn't. But the sun rises whether you believe or not. The sun rises whether you ask for it or not. Amida's light of wisdom is unhindered. It is boundless. It is infinite. It is unblockable. There is no place that you can hide. Even your ego isn't big enough to block the light of Amida's wisdom. Amida's great compassion is immeasurable, unlimited, absolute. There is no discrimination, there's no judgment, there's no calculation, just pure compassion. Inconceivable compassion that is way beyond what the human mind can conceive of. So don't ask why Amida reaches out to you. Don't ask why Namo Amidabutsu works. Although as a minister, I can give you a very doctrinal answer. Uh, don't wonder if the pure land is real. So you ask, prove that Amida, the pure land, and Namo Amidabutsu are real. Prove it. Prove it. The classic answer is, you're alive right here, right now, aren't you? Amida's compassion has already embraced you and will never abandon you. Whether you believe or not, the sun rises. Whether you believe or not, Amida's compassion and wisdom is working in your life to realize your birth in the pure land so that you become one with Amida Buddha. And you return to this world of delusion to help guide others to find their path to the pure land. So whether you believe or not, just pause. Take a moment to reflect upon the absolute reality that the sun rose this morning. You woke up, not dead, and a new day awaits you, you, me, me of all people. Namo Amidabutsu has become you. Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu. So the essence of Shin Buddhism is Shinjin, Amida's great love and great compassion, transforming my all-too-human heart and mind so that I can respond in gratitude to life, this unrepeatable life, as it unfolds naturally, just the way it is. Just say mahalo.
Mahalo for listening this morning. And may your day be filled with aloha and rainbows and sunsets and sunrises and moonrises and moonsets. Beautiful ocean, blue skies, white clouds. Namon, namon.